It's not. It's going to come under par. Here we go. Love, Jacks up. Love the inside was. Here comes Robinson laying down that rail. Hangs on to it. Transitions in the barrel. Jack Robinson punches free. Back <laughs> into the pit one more time. Oh my goodness. When you're in sync and in rhythm with the ocean, it's like part of his body or something. He is connected today. He feeds off energy. He feeds off mana. He looks back at the mountain sometimes, and I don't know what's going on, but he can make no mistakes. What a ride. This thing was absolutely insane. It's kind of like he just heard Jack say, like, okay, this is an eight. This is over an eight. I'm taking off here. Drops down to this first section. That rail was buried so deep there. Up under the hood. I didn't think he was coming out of this, but it's Jack. Of course he is. And he pulls up into this second tube, gets spat out again. If there's a tube to be found, Jack's going to find it. Is Jake going to change the requirement right now? Or is he going to say, don't take off unless it's, it's a 10-point right? I think he has to, Jesse. What would you like about the first turn? I mean, this is as big as a carve gets. Like, he basically, like um, Flick mentioned, he buried half of his board in the water. And how's the regroup right there? Just cat reflexes, also like you mentioned before. I, I don't know what to say. This is one of the best waves I've, I've probably seen out here. Like, as far as how big this wave was, you couldn't surf that wave better. Yeah, double barrel at sunset, that's crazy. The read and the transition between each of those moments on the wave was it, the best I've seen, all event. So we look out the back, it's like a set's rolling through and it looks like Molly's having a look. Here we go with Molly Picklum. Delays the bottom turn, wave raises up, Pickles up into the lip, big explosion oh. behind her and what a turn. Molly Picklum taking it to the house. You can look at it here. Look at these little rivets that Molly had to sort of um, play with as she like lined up this first section here and just cranked it <laughs> off the lip. That's huh. radical. <gasps> radical. One more time. Yeah, this was so beautiful. It was such a big wave and such a big section. You can really see how powerful that was. And her legs were fully extended there and she just hung on for dear life. It's really love this angle here you can just really see that how thick that lip is as she went up to hit it beautiful rainbow spray as well I, this in this in my books is probably one of the best most critical turns that has been laid out by any of the women or them maybe in the history of sunset beach actually when you look at just the disconnect there the size of the wave look at right on her heels an avalanche of white water i mean not just this event i'm going to say in the history of women's surfing at Sunset Beach and Picklum. <laughs> Her final number four continues with a peak popping up. Jack Robinson pulls up and under. Comes flying out of the barrel once again and nails it off the top. Robbo looking for another big section. Drills it. I knew he was going to pull in, but it was such a huge risk. And then the wave just lit, lit up like a light bulb, and the whole thing blew up into a, a massive bubble, and just he just weaved right through it. As he came out, he just had the fist pump. You know, you could see him feeling it. And then on the way back out, he was paddling. You could see him trying to calm himself down, go into zen mode, and it was a beautiful thing. So it was incredible surfing. Obviously, Italo not out of it ever. I mean, the guy's an animal. Reynos in his corner, he's on that 6'5", he's just telling him, you're gonna need another eight, you're gonna need another big score. Yelled at him to get back out there and go for it. Sets are on the horizon. Thank you, Hawaii. This is why we're here. This is why we're here, Was One more angle deep on the peak, Jesse. Positioning right there, way behind the TP. And as you see, he's just like, I need to really move forward because this is very critical how backdooring he is on that, um, on that wave. And, Feet on the front, as usual for those surfers when they're riding a tube ride. And right here, he already knew he had 80% of the job done. He just needed to be critical, but not over pushing it. So he would just finish that wave and get a massive score. As you see, a second turn, nice and big. And right here, just laying it back. Not He could have been more critical, but he held it back. But And have a look at Ethan. It's that beautiful style there. First... We didn't see that one before. That was really oh. nice. <laughs> what a what a beautiful roundhouse cutback on such a big open section here. Really just hit that section like it was a left hand big backside turn. It was beautiful to watch. And then straight up into that second turn. Wow, I mean, I think this maneuver is one of the most underrated maneuvers in surfing. And if you can execute it like this, 
wow. I mean, that's basically two turns. He put the carving manoeuvre out as if he's going right, and then he went back and hit it like a backhand re-entry. I mean, it, that is a perfect uh, example of how to do a roundhouse cut back. It's like spa treatment for your eyeballs <laughs> watching this guy surf. You believe me now? For <laughs> I just, I've never doubted you for a <laughs> second. I love your pick. Eli Hanneman and also Matthew McGillivray coming through the white water. 8.33, Felipe. Yeah, I mean, that's um, this is the kind of turns that you want to do at sunset, you know. Once you have one big turn on the wave and then a second one like that on a big section, you are you're pretty much know that you're going to get a big score, you know, because sunset, you need that big open face and that big carve, a lot of water. So, And Matt, you know, he's, he's one of my favorites, you know, in bigger surfing, and he just puts everything in the line, and I mean... We're just watching this wave right now, getting an 8332 turns pretty much. So, good surfing. Really love that connection for McGill of Rays. Put in a lot of time out here in the off season. Always strong in big open ocean waves. You just reminded me, Felipe, some big turns he provided at Main Break Margaret River. Pick up there in the tube. Jordy Smith. And coming out for Jordy Smith. Disappearing act for the South African former champ out here. And he's bringing his A game in this opening round. That was such, you can see the smile on his face, such an impressive barrel ride. See, here is the score that he got for this. Yes, and this is what we have been talking about all day. You want those waves that actually look small, but they're growing down the line and hit the end bow better. Right here, getting lift, but then just slowing himself down just enough to get the best barrel of the day by far. Like, that was one, two, three sections and going through that fumble in the end right there. Back to live action here with Miguel Pupo on the backhand. Beautiful snap from Miggy. Lines up this trench of a bottom turn. One more vertical snap. He gets two in that time, Miguel Pupo. The six-point ride will take him into the lead over Jordy Smith. Jordy Smith with a 9.33 searching for a backup score at the moment. 12 minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Uh, but to echo your point, you know, Crosby Colapinto, when, when he qualified for the championship tour, asked him what he was looking forward to. He said, surfing against his brother, who's right here. Griffin finds a barrel and comes out. This may be the number for Griff. Gets up there early, air drops into it, and survives the explosion. Griffin Colapinto, <laughs> we talked about the master and the apprentice. Perhaps <laughs> the situation here looks like the master just was masterful in his execution and turned the heat in the final three minutes. I saw uh, Wilcox preparing. A lot of boards. We'll stick with this now on the back end. Big wind up and the Australian connects. Nice flow off the bottom. Great tag there for Jacob. Lip on his heels. That'll end that ride. But great connection on the back end whip from Jacob Wilcox. Kikas. Going down the line, searing carbs, and Federico Marias, that's what he's known to do. He has that big front hand swoop that he's able to turn to every single time. We saw him, you know, in success making a final in J Bay in 2017. Hits the lineup with Jack Robinson in the round of 32. As we come into the screen with Jake Marshall on a beautiful start on this wall. Nice big carve again. This thing's going all the way. A third turn for Jake Marshall. And he still has some room to go straight up and drills it. Wow. What an incredible ride for Jake. That difference is Sonny was doing it on a 7-4. This is a 6-4 under the feet of John John Florence. Yeah, I mean, this this was that last wave that he just did. I, I mean, wow. Just to have that ability to just absolutely stomp it so hard, lay back as well, come down with the lip. This is the angle I really wanted to see, just how radical this was. This is even just a different variation of that 7-6 that we saw just before. And to have the ability and the strength to hold on here, you can see he came down with that explosion, gets completely got engulfed. To have the strength to do that is a really, really hard thing. But it's just hard. And we got Brisa. This is what she was waiting for. And Hennessy opened up with a 6.5, is going to easily take the lead with that 
performance, though. She was waiting for a long time, Jesse. But when that wave came through, she was able to execute, and the number just came through, Jesse. As we're still with Snake, Flick also just representing hard for WA right now as we <laughs> go right into this one with Lakey Peterson. That clean first turn has been really reliable in this oh. heat and a cool-looking down car version of it as she's looking for her lead back. I always love getting Snake's theories, too, as we oh. go into the barrel with Betty <laughs> Lou. She makes it off the bottom and an absolute hammer wow. of a finishing move. That's an excellent ride for you. <laughs> Look out. Betty Lou Sakura Johnson getting the barrel and then absolute hack to finish happen on this wave flick. Yeah, this was so sick. Just what Snake said. She really had to be in the barrel. She wanted. To, there was nowhere else to get around this section but through the barrel and then lays it straight up into the lip and sort of um, resembled that wave that Griff got, you know, in those dying seconds of that heat against Kay. Just, okay, Kay isn't going to go, I'll go. And just, yeah, beautiful serving here. Read that barrel really well. It's the only way through and just hacked it under the lip. It was super impressive. One more look. Here's Snake. Wow. And it's like it's such a hard barrel to read on the bowl here. It's like it doesn't – sometimes it goes really hollow, but sometimes – we call it the, the breathing dragon because <laughs> um, it's got so many different, like, lumps and bumps, and sometimes it drops out. But uh, that's really well surfed. And having that tail drop there just shows her commitment. She couldn't even <laughs> see. I love the hair flick. <laughs> uh, and that was, wasn't just for style. That was, was actually – And they didn't adjust so properly, but um, – I hope this one, it's its a banger for us. Here we go, Gabby Bryant. Gabby, two-time semi-finalist out here at Sunset Beach with power surfing just like that. Looks like she's angry at being in the elimination round, Gabby Bryant, 21 years old. Like way above average surfing from, from Gabby. That was excellent surfing. As you see it right here, first turn, just straight, not wiping any speed off. Just beautiful off the lip and right there just engaging the rail and driving all the way through it's so hard for you to keep that rail engaged the whole time and she did it so well right here a little bit more vertical and then this second one is money right there like beautiful style beautiful approach just violent a couple of violent turns from gabriella bryant beating up sunset They've had the advantage of watching some of the nervous moments from finals day morning, and Betty Lou is going to get things started for us. Nice, healthy bottom turn, cool attack on the open face. Already ready for her second maneuver, puts a lot into it with the slide, lays low to control it. Sakura feeling good on finals day and putting up a nice combination of turns. Yeah, waves shaping up, and Kanoa Igarashi Activating Igarashi, smooth on rail here and gaps that finish there. It's not done actually, he's got more in the tank. Nice opening ride for Kanoa Igarashi. He's up against Seth Moniz in men's quarterfinal. You know, here at Sunset, it's really tricky. You gotta know what you're doing and where you're going. Jordy Smith knows what he's doing. He pulls into the barrel, treads through this barrel, fights his way out of that. Jordy, talk about knowing what you're doing. Smith with a 6.83 already in the score bank, and he may go excellent on that one, Felicity. It have been a massive connection. Callanan's going to look to make him pay for that. How about that hammer out the back? Perfect transition on the wall. Nice wave choice as he'll go under the lip, and Ryan is on fire here on finals day. Just big sections, and then Ryan's Jesse. Okay, this first turn is incredible, and it's all about the setup right here. See how clean that bottom oh. turn was. He was able to get, come from behind and get so vertical, and just culminate it up with two massive turns that under, under the lip right there, they usually call under the umbrella or something. Italo has priority here. Jack right behind him, watching him take off. Just needs a 5.11 for a lead change. There's that first turn, and that carve. Throws it up a bit more of a hack there and nice two turn combination hitting it with speed and throwing some variety out there as well. Pulled that first car short to be able to get there and throw more vertical surfing into the second section. And wow, you can never stop watching Italo. Doesn't like to kick out early and tries to stomp one in the flats. He'll lose that finish, but he'll probably take the lead. Yeah, I had a lot of bump 
and Lump going through it, and Jack up and right. Here we go with Jack Robinson. Slashing turn to open up. Arms all the way back, two turns and fist pump. Jack Robinson chipping away at it. Surely he's going to get the score that he needs. A 3.24. He's going to get that and probably a little extra and take the lead off of Ryan Kalnan. Beautiful way from him and a little smoother face here for Jack for the beginning. As you see it, he was able to get more on rail and just unleash that um, turn. Got a little bit caught, but the second turn is just sharp, like on rail, perfect, executed, and finish it off strong. Both very good waves, very well served. But check out this turn right here, just laying it so much that he's putting his body in the water. As that's, that's why all that water kind of got him getting mixed up right there, and second turn just the opposite, just clean and perfect. Now starting to claw his way back, Jack Robinson right behind him. Lengthy time on the rail there, just laying back into that turn. Hooks it again, banks it in the troubled water for the finish. Right in. Getting started in the final, Jack Robinson from Western Australia. Goes down that nice, clean, casual arc in the pocket, wide open for that gouge in the critical part of the wave. Off the lip line and looks so solid on his feet. Jack will continue to ride this wave to set up the lift from the Hawaiian Water Patrol. They won't go into the impact zone unless it's a safety moment. This will provide a lot more action in this 35-minute final, already with time ticking down.